afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here. Welcome to the JDC West 2015-2016 International Business Case Presentation. First off, I'd just like to say a big thanks to our judges. So we have Gary Vickers from Enco, Josh Lawson from Social Bank, Michael Kozar from Federated Cooperative Limited, Kenneth Coates from Johnson Trayama, Graduate School of Public Policy, Wayne Brownlee from Potash Park, and Carolyn Tassad from PMG. Competitors will have a maximum of 20 minutes to present. Immediately following the presentation, judges will have a total of 5 minutes to ask presenters questions. The volunteer timekeeper will show time cards at various intervals to indicate the remaining time and will stop any speaker who exceeds the maximum time limit. No questions, comments, cell phones, or picture taking will be permitted from the audience at any time. The audience will only be permitted to applaud following the question and answer period. The audience is banned from any material that bears the name or symbol of a competing university, and we ask that the audience exit the room immediately following the question and answer period. So competitors, you may begin when you're ready. There's a saying amongst pilots that any switch in any plane or any new innovation is because of a past crash. The Malaysian airline flight 370 is a prime example of that. It had the tracking devices needed installed in the tail, but because of the black box needed to be in hand to be able to process and analyze this data, there's a gap in the system that needs to be filled. We are so honored to be here today to represent a recommendation for you to help create a solution for this gap and to bring you to new future points. My name is Riley, this is my partner Alex and Iris, and today we form InFrame Consulting, and by the end of this recommendation, we will be proud to um, bring you into new markets, create, use the, utilize the technology that is available to you to create a competitive advantage that already adding onto what your great services provide, provide long-term feasibility, and address the legal issues that face you regarding the bids that you'd like to take forward, to which will help you merge into the new markets. So the issues your company are facing are highly material, but they're quite clear cut and one leads logically into the next. Immediately, you need to decide whether you're going to accept or reject the flight um, proposal. Doing this is going to lead to different avenues for your company and it is an extremely important decision you need to make. Once you've done this, you will, this will lead into the new international contracts you're uh, considering. You have one in Angola, one in Burundi, and one in um, Omar, and you need to decide which is the best for your company, and each has their own risks, which we'll be running through in our analysis. Lastly, once you've chosen one or multiple of these locations, you need to decide your approach for how you're going to manage the project. You could bring in your own uh, employees and set them up with a home base. You could fly them over, or you could um, partner with a consulting firm such as PwC. Now let's have a look at the, uh, the pros and cons for whether to enter uh, to receive the contract. First, if we accept the contract, you, uh, your company will face uh, increased responsibility because that uh, the flight company are gonna uh, are 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 gonna shift the responsibility to train the employees for your customer to your uh, to you, which means you uh, you have to pay extra money in training, and also but but instead you have a higher potential finance reward. In their revised proposal. They said that you can receive a 4,500 uh, subsidy due to their new changement. This allows you to increase your product margin from $5,000 to $5,500. And also, it allows you to expand into the new market here, which means the uh, emerging market. And also, they also promise you with the exclusive, exclusive contract for three years. But if, we, uh, if your company declines the proposal, you may face less risk. You don't have to negotiate with the, uh, the contract with uh, flight again, which will take a certain amount of time. And now your company only have three hours to make the bet. Also, uh, 
uh, because you are decline, uh, you will reject uh, uh, the contract, and you will probably lost the opportunity to enter the new market because uh, this company has um, um, a, a, a technology advantage and their products are innovated. Uh, if you if you don't have the suppliers, probably your uh, enter process to the new market will be sacrificed. And, and we think that if you receive the proposal will be a better idea, which uh, because it can provide you with the opportunity to uh, expand uh, to a bigger market, which is in the emerge, uh, emerging countries. And also we think that the exclusive contract with a three year guarantee can provide you with a long-term relationship with the suppliers. And a higher potential financial reward contributed directly to your product margin will also be valued. And now it's time, once you have made the decision of, enter, uh, of accepting, accepting the contract, your, your second choice will be which market to en uh, enter. Now, the developed countries' GP, GDP growth rates are remains at 2%. However, if you look at the emerging market, their GDP has been growing around 10%. Some countries are even higher than that number. So we think that we need to enter the emerging market to gain more market and to guarantee your sales in growth. And the first market we're going to look at is Angola. We consider it with higher legal risks. Because if you want to uh, enter that market, you have to pay the introducer who, is, uh, who has a relationship with the Angola flights, which is your customer. We consider that it will be larger risks because you don't have the receipt receipt of who you are go, uh, who are you paying for however angola has uh, uh, although angola angola has been growing rapidly but if we have a look at the uh, prediction of their gdp growth in 2016 you can notice that their uh, their growth rate uh, is predicted to be 3% which is quite low so uh, so we think that maybe if you want to enter that market, you will give it a second thought. And also, uh, and although Bra uh, and although has a strong ties to the government, but we can assure that this process is illegal uh, is legally right. And now I will pass to my coworkers who will continue to talk about the other markets option. So next we have Burundi, and this seems like a very attractive opportunity for your firm. First off, this is completely legal. We have gone through the additional documents and have found that it is, complies with the act provided. Secondly, Salamani has financial stability. He sold his previous company and received $40 million in the proceedings. This guarantees that he can pay for your firm's uh, operations and there is less risk of a default on the payments. Lastly. There is a slight potential risk for political instability, but this is not a huge impact, and we can easily work around this. So the third option you're looking into bid is Omen. Now, Omen, Omen has been in a monastery for the last m numerous years, and currently he's at the age of 73, and there is no platform for if he falls ill or if he was to die. So there's a huge political instability there, which would not be the best to invest in a business um, where the economy is not certain, neither is the political side. And in addition, with the legality around certain bids of books, what's happening, there's not sure where the money is being transferred, so there's a great legal risk as if you wanted to be entering this market. You do not have any experience in um, any external markets except for Sweden and Nora at the moment. So entering up any of the three places is going to take some risk and for sure you're going to need some experience and guidance along the way. And for that reason, um, the solution we choose is to pick one, is to move into Bur uh, Burundi. 
Now, we chose one because one of your goals and future expectations is to move into growing markets, and that is absolutely something we completely support and understand, but we think it's great to take small incremental steps, so choose Burundi as the first place, as, as my partner Alex highlighted, he, um, Soleimani has the resources, the 40 million from his previous sell, which is a technological company, so he has the experience in knowing hardware and he has the financial means to help pay the bills and pr understand where your market's coming from. Um, the sales come from the idea that you, he's looking for 20 planes, so therefore he's looking for FDRs to su support those 20 planes, so there's sales with the greatest quantity out of the three offers. The experience, as I said, comes from the fact that he has technological, uh, technolo technological background and the feasibility to support it. And as we said, it supports all Canadian legal fees that any expedited process to get the government going is considered legal within Canada. As, so therefore, that does not possess a risk as when you're paying for the introduction of the expedited government fees. So this does all hinge on you winning this bid, and this is a huge potential uh, problem. But we're going to look at your competitive advantage and show you why you are the prime candidate for this uh, bid. First of all, you have this advanced technology. Like Riley was saying before, in this new age, it is imperative that you're able to receive this data as it comes in real time. It is quite difficult to find a plane once it's crashed and retrieve the black box it could be at the bottom of an ocean. So if the data is transmitting in real time, you have this data immediately. And once it's crashed, you can know what occurred and uh, give closure to the families. So this is a huge selling point for your company. And next, you have your already established customer service and customer intimacy approach. You respond immediately to customer uh, questions compared to your competitors who often take up to two to three days. When you're moving to a new market, your customers uh, want to know that you're able to respond to them in a quick time as you have a new relationship. And lastly, you have experienced staff. Many of your competitors use junior members to do product research, but you actually use your executive staff and uh, partners to manage projects. This gives a sense of uh, expertise and uh, high-level professionalism that your customers will highly value. And here comes our suggestion. First, we suggest you to hire PwC project manager instead of set up a new office or let your, uh, uh, let your junior, uh, senior managers to fly from and back to the, uh, to the country. Uh, by hiring the PwC uh, staff, uh, you can uh, update uh, 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 I, uh, sorry, I forgot to mention that those PWC staffs are from the local uh, Barandi branch, so they will have the cultural experience. So they know what is legal or illegal in the new country. And also, they are reliable. They are PWC's uh, uh, employees. Their expertise can be guaranteed. And also, uh, you, your contract with the PwC company can assure that you achieve future flexibility. Because once the contract is finished, you can have, a, uh, you, you can have a, another option whether to keep the contract or stop it. And also we suggest your company to, uh, to outsourcing the, the training progress. Because uh, uh, your company noticed that one of the reasons of not selling the product, product is that the, uh, the, your customers are not willing to spend a lot of money and time to train different uh, pilots who will future uh, using this new technology product. And by outsourcing, you can use, your, uh, you can use their ex expertise and let them to do the training. And also, uh, uh, outsourcing this uh, product uh, only takes four thousand dollars per unit, uh, which is lower than the four thousand five hundred subsidies, uh, subsidies you received from flight. And then, 
uh, then comes the monitoring process. We suggest you to learn from the PWC employees and now, uh, to learn from them to learn whether it's legal or illegal to, uh, to pay for the government of officers and to learn how to operate in a totally cultural different country. So we've implemented a small timeline here for you to understand how our uh, recommendations stack up and when they will occur. This is based on winning that bid for Burundi and immediately you would train the pilots on the new FDR system. You would outsource, hire the company, bring them in and spend a month with these pilots showing them how to use the brought box and the new uh, uh, components that come with it. You would also set up that PWC project manager immediately to work with the uh, Burundi jets. And then, at certain as six months, you would start to research new contracts within the African market. Uh, working in Burundi alone is not going to be enough to support uh, retailing these new FDR materials, and you need to ex look into new areas that you can expand. So we also have some milestones we hope to achieve for your company within these time periods. At the end of the first year, we expect to have two new contracts within the African market. By the end of two years, you'll be turning a profit on these uh, flight boxes. And then uh, by the end of the third years, you can renegotiate your contract with flight. Just like any great venture into the world, there's always risks associated with it. Now, the first one, first one that I'm sure comes to mind is what if we don't, what if your company does not win that contract, um, the, the bid for Burundi? Now, that is a risk as you do have two big competitors out there. But we believe that because of your competitive advantage with the innovative technology of being able to um, real time track the data, not just have it hard drive, um, stored on a hard drive, there will be a huge asset of what um, Burundi Jet is looking for as that creates the, the competitive advantage is also transferred onto their company. So in the likelihood though that you do not win the bid, that take that opportunity to look at other new markets and to take the time to fully evaluate their culture. You do have, you're in a situation where you have three hours to decide wh where you want to go and you, there's a few legal issues within the area. You have little experience in the certain of those company, countries. But so if this, if this does present itself where you do not win the bid, you can see this as an opportunity. Take the time to really look into different countries, figure out the political standings, figure out what is legal, talk to certain advisors about what legal proceedings normally happen between bids, what is happening normally, what is normal standard culture for transfers of money. So we believe that this is, a, this is a high risk and it could happen because you do have, as I said, two good competitors out there, but it, it doesn't result as in a failure as it could be an opportunity if it arises um, that you could see and seek out potential markets. Now the other one is that if you successfully do win the Burundi contract, and you, as the one of their co-advisors said, you have looked at whether something is legal or not, but how do you know if someone's actually going to pay? These countries do not have the greatest standing potentially of where money is being flown in, um, transferred in and out to. But uh, for, our, for in frame consulting, we do not believe that this is the highest risk because as I said, Soleimani's um, past records show he has $40 million from the sale of his last uh, of his last company, so he has the money there. He knows how to run his business, and if that does arrive, though, that he does not pay on time, first negotiate, talk with them, figure out was it a one-time thing, was it an actual reason for it behind it, and if that doesn't come up, look at um, going into the accounts receivable insurance from the ED from the EDC, as it would be co it would cost a certain amount, but it would be it be more costly not to have any revenue come in from uh, Berlin Jets. And then if, um, if that does not hit in the long term, then it would be smart to look at is, is Burundi a feasible option in the long term and if unfortunately we would have to pull out of the market, which would be so saddening, but feasibly it would not be possible. So we have a budget here for you to understand some of the costs and revenue coming in with this implementation. First off, we have the total product margin, which would be 96500 This comes from the per unit product margin of 5000 per unit. Uh, and then additionally, you have the subsidy from flight, which is 4500 per unit, which equals $90,000, as uh, Burundi Jets has 20 jets. So per unit and times 20 will give us this number. But additionally, we only need 80000 for training, which leaves us a surplus of 10000 from that subsidy. 
we do have to hire the PwC consultant, and they do come at quite a cost, $350,000 per year. Uh, unfortunately, this leads us with a deficit in the first year. I know nobody likes to see that, but we would much rather have your company experience this deficit than incur legal fees, which would be many times greater than what is seen here. This way, you would know you're in a secure approach, and as you uh, learn more about this new market, you can more confidently move into uh, surrounding countries and experience long-term growth for the future. With our recommendation to, yes, accept Flight's proposal and then move into the bid for Burundi contract, we believe that absolutely can bring you into prosperity into the future and use the connectivity that your flights can offer you around the world and take the technology advancement that your company specifically has a comparative advantage in to win worldwide competitive markets and seek greater exposure in the world. Thank you. Absolutely. So um, PwC's project manager is based in the region, um, so therefore we believe that it would be easier to understand what norms would be. So if, for example, the government initiated ex expediting the process to get to figure out the documents, um, that we know from the Canadian that it is um, that is not considered a bribe, but there are other circumstances where we might be questionable, and so having a PwC project manager in place there to run the operation, but also be physically present in that location would have a better viewpoint of whether it's legal or not. Well, if, uh, you haven't had a chance to review this with legal counsel, but you suggested that you're 100% confident uh, that this one's okay. Uh, so I'm the one taking the risk. Would you bet my freedom on that? Yes, I would. <laughs> with the document, we checked <laughs> where it complies, and it is just an expediting the process of the paperwork. This is a routine government action, and it is essential to doing business in this country, and that is completely legal under Canadian law. Um, absolutely, it's very, it's a very true question. You already stated that, yeah, last year you had a financial deficit, and this year we're proposing you would too. Um, we do believe, though, that by entering this market, there's so much you can grow from. With this 20 plane proposal, there's guarantee that most likely in the future the um, Bur uh, Burlington Jets would grow, and so therefore you, they would grow, and you can grow, and then the experience you can learn from learning from the PwC project manager and from what you can learn from the other markets um, would allow you to move into that market. So learning from this basis, yes, for now, it is hard to see possibly where your financials are going, but um, we believe that it would be a great investment for the future. Yeah. And in addition to that, uh, your company already set aside $250,000 on this new project, and which, uh, of which $200,000 are the fixed cost. If you are not gonna continue to uh, to your uh, to your operation, those two hundred thousand dollars will be the like fixed cost. You cannot return any of it from uh, any from it. Our supplier, uh, Flight, is asking us to consider three RFPs. Do you think there's any merit in getting some independent legal advice to see if there's a way to make the three possible? Definitely. But unfortunately, we only have three hours to make the proposal, and in that amount of time, we just can't uh, approach these uh, new places. So once we have Burundi, we would definitely bring in some legal counsel to explore different avenues uh, throughout that area to hopefully find some new markets within Africa and uh, the Middle East. So what, have you, uh, like one of your two big risks are the Absolutely, we thought about that. Um, it is a huge financial investment, and we understand that it could be a huge risk if you're not even getting to the first payment. Um, but we wanted to emerge into the market first, and then if that financially arrives, for sure, absolutely crack down on that um, insurance for seasonal because there's no point creating business in a new market if you aren't even making revenues. Uh, but we wanted to address 
the um, Burlington Jets firsthand to figure out where they're at. And we do believe because the $40 million, and he has previous business sales, that he's probably quite confident in understanding business, um, business how business um, procedures work. And then if after, if after one payment or even a few weeks, we understand that there's some, some risk or potential danger, absolutely to seek the EDC would be a high priority. I'm really pleased to see you had a bullet there about advanced technology and then all you talked about was the fact that we could find the plane that goes down. Yeah. Is there any more to that side? Is that your, I don't think we've lost very many planes while Asian Airlines is one of them. No, there is definitely some um, other benefits to this. We've seen the same technology in these planes for 50 years and it is really time for technological, technological change. There is real-time data and it is uh, going through satellites so you can receive and transmit data instead of just transmitting. You can receive updates that might be essential for the plane to the black box and they work in conjunction between the two, which is a huge change from what we've seen in the past 50 years. That's all. I have a question, so thank you very much.